Good morning. This is Arnie Waters here at Waters Capital in Boston, Massachusetts. Welcome to the Rare Earth World. We're concluding our specific lecture on each element, and we will go further into uses starting today uh, with promethium, which is uh, a light rare earth element used to uh, turn, in the process of turning light into electrical current. It has possible uses on a portable x-ray unit. It has a possible, it's a possible heat source for auxiliary, auxiliary power for uh, space probes and satellites, and also in the production of thickness gauges. Samarium is used extensively in motion picture lightning, lighting, permanent magnets, optical lasers and masers, catalytic I see. It is a catalytic for ethanol. It's used in alloys, headphones, in, and as an absorber in nuclear reactors. So we concluded our review of all of the elements, uh, rare earth elements, whether light or heavy. And uh, we hope you use this uh, as a convenient way of looking back and understanding uh, what rare earth elements are used for. Now, today we're going to talk a little bit about hybrid electric vehicles as well. Now, in hybrid electric vehicles, and I don't think I need to say that these are dramatically growing and there's going to be more and more of them and all that kind of thing. Uh, the batteries use lanthanum and cerium. The catalytic converter uses lanthanum. The electric motors use uh, specialized batteries that require rare earths. Um, the LCD screens use europium, yttrium, and uh, cerium. The component sensors use yttrium. And the hybrid electric motors and generators are neodymium, chrysodymium, diprosium, and terbium. Uh, the glass, the mirrors, the polishing power all use cerium. And the fuel additive is cerium and lanthanum. So what we've got here is a situation where dramatic increases in uses. I'm going through all this because if you listen to many conventional analysts, they tell you that rare earths are basically an old story. And now we're entering a period where there's not going to be a new story in rare earths, so get out of rare earths. And what we're trying to point out is that the multiple uses of rare earths and human ingenuity are going to provide a continuation of very strong returns to investors who acquire rare earth companies. We've made five recommendations, and we'll go over them again in a different uh, uh, episode. But I just wanted you to understand that if you're in rare earth, these are some of the reasons you should stay. If you're not in rare earth, these are reasons you need to get in. So this is Arnie Waters. Aim for the ice flows, not the open water. Have a great day.